Guys, welcome back to Between the Ropes TV. Now, it's an early start, but we've got to jump on and talk about last night's shock result between Teofimo Lopez and George Cambosis Jr. Now, obviously, it's been a bit of a spicy fight week. You know, you had Cambosis' team predicting a war. You had all the heat with the both fathers at the uh, public weigh-in. Lopez predicted a first-round knockout. But, you know, as we now know, that is not how this fight has turned out. It's gone to Cambosis Jr. on a split decision. Uh, I feel it was the right call. I mean, you know, we always knew. I mean, personally, I got it wrong. I predicted a Lopez victory. But I will say, you know, we knew Cambosis would be... He'd be a hard night's work for anybody. He's very busy. He can box. He can punch. Uh, and oh, I think it was just the perfect storm, you know, in fairness, Lopez, when we saw him on the scales on Friday, now I know a few people on our Instagram account uh, were talking about this as well. He looked bone dry on the scales. And it's been no secret that he struggles to make that weight of 135 now. Uh, and I think it's a case of, you know, obviously he won the belts against Lomachenko last October with the multiple delays between COVID and Trilla, I, I think it's took its toll on him. Obviously, he's not made 135 for 12 months, 13 months. And I think if we'd have seen this fight back in June when we were originally scheduled to, I don't think we'd be seeing Lopez at lightweight anymore because on the scales, he looked drained. He just looked he's bone dry is the only way I can describe it. And that's a shame because... I, Last night, I mean, you know, in fairness to Cambosis, he came out off the bat and it was Lopez who was actually predicting the first round knockout. And fair play to Cambosis, he got the knockdown in the first round. And at that point, I was watching and I thought, oh dear, like, the, as I said, there was a bit of talk on social media about how Lopez looked at this lightweight limit. And clearly people were right, you know, he, it, it wasn't a good start. But in fact, taking nothing from Cambosis, you know, we're not, sitting here saying he's won this because of a weight drain Lopez. That's obviously not the case. Fair play to Cambosis. And then, you know, I think it, like a lot of world championship fights as the fight wore on, uh, it was in that sort of mould. And then Lopez, he got his own knockdown in the 10th round. And I thought, oh, he's, the table's going to turn almost here. But it wasn't to be. Uh, you know, Lopez, fair play. He'd done exactly what he came to do. He, he said the second he beat Lee Selby last year, I'll jump straight in with Tiafimo now. Obviously, over a year on, we've actually now finally got that. And he did everything he said he was going to do. And, you know, you, some fighters get a bit of stick, don't they, when they're talking about, oh, I'll do this, I'll do that, I want a war, I'll, you know, meet me in the middle, let's go toe-to-toe. But in fairness to Cambosis, he's looked determined all week. He he's made a lot of threats, which in fairness have turned into promises. He's now, you know, he is the new lightweight king. There's no no other way around that. But now I'm sort of thinking, I mean, two quick points after the fight. Obviously, I'm a big fan of Tiafimo Lopez. He's he's an incredible fighter, and at just 24, you know, he can come back. This is this is the thing about you know, you've got him, Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney, Gavonta Davis is a touch older, you know, I think he's 27. But, you know, all these fighters, there's so much talk about these big, big fights that we can see. And we still can now. Cambosis is top of the tree, but, you know, let's be fair, there's no, it should be said, there's no IBF, uh, there's no rematch clause because of it being an IBF mandatory. So there's no reason why he can pick and choose what he wants to do. Personally, for Cambosis, I want to see him fight Devin Haney next. You know, the whole WC, WBC franchise situation is just ridiculous for me. We can get that fight. We can crown a genuine, undisputed, lightweight world champion. Let's do it. What You know, why can't we? Eddie Hearns talked a lot this week about Lopez and Haney. You've got a gentleman's agreement. They'll fight next. I did then see a little bit with Lopez and his team saying, well, there is that, but... It may not be at lightweight, you know, maybe up at, you know, 140. I think even 147 was mooted or a catch weight. But obviously, that's now gone, hasn't it? Let's be fair. Lopez needs to go away, regroup. He'll obviously move up a weight because clearly he just can't do lightweight. But this shouldn't deter anybody from anything. You know, as I was just saying, these young fighters, they are the future of boxing, whether, you know, whether you love them, hate them, they're the future. 
fight each other. A loss isn't the end. Um, there's too much emphasis on these O's. You know, you've got Mayweather and his team keeping Tank away from fighting these big names. I know he beat Leo Santa Cruz, and Leo Santa Cruz is an absolute legend of the sport, but he he's the featherweight, really, for me. I know he won, he's won titles at Super Feather and stuff, but really, he's a featherweight. The, the need to get in the ring, you know, we're going to have Devin Haney's out next weekend against Jojo Diaz. That's a big fight, and will we see another shock? We'll get onto that this week. We'll come and do a little preview for you for those uh, that want to know more about that fight. But that's got to be the takeaway from this now because we've seen a few shocks this year. We, you know, the big fights aren't necessarily getting made for whatever reason. Fighters are then having to jump in with mandatories. And, you know, Anthony Joshua, Alexander Usyk, while Usyk is an, an extremely credible mandatory opponent, we all wanted the Fury fight, certainly over here in the UK. But I think it was a worldwide appeal. Now a mandatory fight that's sc that scuppered us seeing the Fury Joshua fight certainly for probably twelve months, depending on how they all get on in the interim. We've now seen Cambosis Lopez again taking nothing away from Cambosis. He's a really good, solid fighter, but let's be honest, we wanted to see Lopez in with a Haney, a Ryan Garcia, a Tank. These are just the fights that we want, and the boxing world needs to take away from these fights that we need to just get them made because we ne we're never going to get to see them, are we? Because you've got mandatories, you've got voluntary uh, defence opponents stepping up in the interim and shocking the world. And, you know, then all of a sudden they're, they're the ones sat with the keys to the kingdom. And, you know, let's be fair to Cambosis now, as I said, no ma uh, no rematch course. He's going to be sat there. I, I think he'll make the Haney fight. I think it's already starting to be talked about, but this is, you know, very early doors after the fight. So I'm sure he'll go away, have a little bit of rest because it's been a bit of a fragmented camp, hasn't it, with all the delays? You know, they're virtually ready to go in June. Uh, and then Lopez obviously got the COVID outbreak. And then we all know the farce that was Triller. Uh, I believe they actually had their own event last night, but I'm not going to be talking about that when I looked into it. So now, I mean, we'll wrap it up there, guys. Congratulations to George Cambosis Jr., you're the new lightweight king. Let's get those big fights made. Before I wrap it up, I'll have to obviously say before Scott will kill me. If you're new to the channel, please hit those like buttons, hit the subscribe button. We've got a lot more content coming out with you, and we've got some really special stuff uh, coming in the next month. We, you know, we're going to a couple of shows, so we're bringing some exclusive content. And yeah, join us on the next one.